Hey everyone, in this week's episode, we're gonna try to see just how long we can boot dock inside of our RV. Let's go! Hey everyone, we're Dana and Mike. We've been living life on the road with our three dogs searching for our adventure. We are currently on the road headed up north with our end goal to see the Arctic Ocean. Join us every Sunday for new videos as we show you amazing campsites and the stunning natural beauty of North America. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode. We are here in Moab and we are just about to get to our next camp spot. This is gonna be our last camp spot for our time here in the United States. So cross our fingers that we can find one and it's not too busy. We are here just after Easter long weekend. So I'm hoping that we planned this correctly and everybody's leaving to go home today and then we'll arrive when people are leaving. So hopefully that worked out to our favor. <laughs> Don't really want to be finding a camp spot all day long, but we're pretty excited for this week's episode. There's a ton of stuff we can do here in the Moab area, and we're excited to share it with you all. So like we said earlier, we're going to do a bit of a challenge for this episode. We're going to try to break our personal record of how long we can boondock inside of our trailer. We're trying to aim for two weeks. We're going to see if we can go two weeks completely without having to go dump or refill water or anything like that. So. <laughs> It's gonna be a bit of a challenge for sure. I think the most we've ever actually done is more or less about nine days. Yeah. So that's quite a bit shy of two weeks, but we're really gonna stretch out all of our resources, our water usage, our bathroom usage, our showers. That's the big one, obviously. So hopefully we can go through these two weeks without having to go and refill anything. Wish us luck. All right, we are three minutes away from the first camping area spot is the Lone Mesa campground. It is free, but it is a smaller camping area, so I'm just unsure if there will be spots. There's plenty of dispersed camping in Moab, so I'm sure we'll find something. I just hope it doesn't take us all day long. <laughs> Alrighty, everybody, welcome to our new campsite. We got one. Yeah. The yeah. last one. Yeah, it was a bit of a thing getting set up. You saw we had to, it was pretty uneven here, so leveling was kind of a, a fun adventure. But yeah, like we said, we're now here in Moab. This campsite we're at, it's pretty crowded. There's a fair amount of other people here. But I think anywhere we would have gone, it would have been crowded. This right. area is just like super popular. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like we said before, we're gonna start our two week boondocking challenge where we're going to try to use as little water and as little everything <laughs> as possible and we're just going to see if we can make it through these next two weeks so it's going to be a bit of a thing for sure in terms of you know we're going to go on lots of hikes and you know me i love my showers and stuff so i'm going to have to scale back on that probably <laughs> but yeah hopefully this goes well we're starting today today's day one of boondocking challenge let's do this <laughs> So basically, we've decided that the fresh water tank here in the trailer is just for washing of our plates and washing of us. Yeah, so <laughs> we're not gonna use this for cooking, like if we make pasta and the dogs yeah. aren't gonna drink out of this. Usually we pull from the fresh tank for those kind of things, but not this time. We're just going to save it for just the necessities. And then the water that we drink and the doggies drink and then we'll use for cooking and whatnot. Yeah, we'll, we'll, be, the, we'll be our five jugs, gallon jugs with the pump and stuff. We yeah. still need to fill. Yeah, and those are actually empty. So we need to run into town in a little bit after we eat and refill that water. And then we can come back and really relax. <laughs> All right, so I'm washing dishes while you're boondocking. The name of the game is to use as little water as possible for everything. So we got a bunch of tuna in a bowl here. So you gotta wipe it with paper towel first before you wash it. Okay. Really, really conservative with the water. <laughs> Same with the rinse. You gotta use, you gotta get all the soap off, but you don't wanna use that much water, so it's a balance. And 
yeah, we're, we're always living like this anyways in terms of trying to conserve water because we boondock like pretty much everywhere we go anyway. But this is the first time we've tried to go this long. So this time we really, really have to make sure we try. Like most of the time we're usually at a campsite for a week or so. So we don't have to be that stingy with the water because we have a 55 gallon fresh water tank in here, which lasts for quite a while. But when you're trying to do two weeks, you really gotta, you gotta save it. All right, loaded back up in the car. So we're heading into Moab now and there should be a pretty big grocery store, not like a Walmart or anything like that, but still like I think a pretty big grocery store. Another thing to note, it is hot out now. <laughs> it's shorts and t-shirt weather for sure and feels like summer, which is great, but at the same time, it's probably gonna get pretty hot in the trailer. So, but it should be okay. If you guys don't know, we have like an entire super off-grid lithium battery set up in our trailer, even able to run the AC if we wanted to off-grid. Um, but throughout our entire travels, like we're coming up on 10 months now living in the trailer, we've basically never had to use AC. We use AC maybe like less than five times say, throughout like this entire Baja, 10 maybe. months. Yeah, in Baja we did a couple times. It's really nice how cool we can maintain the temperature inside the trailer, even on super hot days. Just cause inside the trailer is all shaded, you open up all the windows, we've got the max air vent fan going. It's actually pretty good. So, yeah. All right, so we've just rolled into Moab. Yeah, this town is looking quite a bit bigger and has a lot more services and shops and stores. There's even a Wendy's. <laughs> Definitely a lot bigger than some of the other towns that we've rolled through, like for the last couple weeks, we went through places like Escalante and Hanksville and Green River and Bryce Canyon, just places like that. The towns are pretty small. There's not a lot of stores or anything, but here in Moab, there's definitely quite a bit of stuff. So good place to resupply and stock up. There's also lots of you know cool places like 4x4 rentals, a ton of the 4x4 roads here in Moab. That's what they're famous for around here. We might go check some of those out later on. Um, but yeah. We gotta fill up these jugs. Well, oh, that's no good. These are out of order. Oh, damn it. All right, so no water here. That was a bust, but one of the employees told me we can just go across the street. There's this outdoor supply store that has free filtered water that we can get. So hopefully that works out. It's that way. Okay, yeah, apparently this is a place that has free filtered water. All right. Heading back to the campsite now. That's done for the chores for today. I also, I got us some steak today. We haven't had, eaten a lot of red meat. Yeah, in a to, long time. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to get away from that. Yeah, we don't eat it very often. We basically just only eat chicken or turkey nowadays for meat. And then for like burgers and stuff, we have Beyond Meat. So it's very rare for us to ever buy beef. But you know, every once in a while, it's nice to just get a nice steak. So I got some steak and vegetables. Should be good. Alright, here we go. Time to make dinner. So we got asparagus, broccoli, and our awesome steak that we're gonna have. We're gonna go pretty simple, it's just salt and pepper on the steak. Same with these, and then we'll have some mashed potatoes on the side. But let's do this. Thank you for making us dinner. Yeah, I really hope the steaks turned out well because it's been a long time. Since <laughs> I, steak, so. I mean, it looks delicious. Yeah. But uh, knowing your track record. Yeah, sometimes I undercook. <laughs> Dana likes her to be medium well, and sometimes it ends up being medium rare. <laughs> I like medium rare, but then sometimes I end up just being straight up rare. So, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Fine. Yeah? I think yes. so. I did it! Yeah. All right, you guys. So I think we're gonna call it for today. This is day one here in Moab in our boondocking challenge. We're gonna get out there tomorrow and start exploring this area, do some hikes and stuff like that. We're actually gonna get up pretty early on all these days to do hikes just because it gets pretty hot here during the day and we don't want our poor puppy's feet to burn, you know? <laughs> but yeah. We'll catch you guys tomorrow once we get out there. We'll see you soon.
All right, good morning, everybody. So it's the next day, we're up bright and early. The sun is just starting to rise in the distance. We're gonna go and do our first couple of hikes here in Moab. So Corona Arch is one of the most popular arches here, located outside of Arches National Park. So Arches National Park is very close to where we are, but we're not gonna go there, it's a national park and the dogs can't do a lot of this stuff anyway. So, but there's a number of arches outside of the park that you can go check out and Corona is apparently one of the best ones. So we're gonna go see that today. This will officially kick off our first exploration of this area. Join us for that, should be a good day. We are on the trail. This trail is supposed to be around four kilometers and I think it's rated moderate, mainly because of the little obstacles that we have to go up and over. I read that there's an eight foot ladder, which should be interesting. Shall see how it goes. Hopefully the puppies are good and it doesn't get too hot for their paws. to Corona Arch and it's pretty darn spectacular. Sun is just poking up so we're finally getting some warmth on our face. But scenery is beautiful. There's only been like one other person here. And yeah, we have the whole place to ourselves now. I feel like I remember reading that Corona Arch is the tallest arch in the area. But yeah, don't quote me on that. I'll have to fact check that. But I think that's what this arch is. All right, that was day one yeah. of hiking. Success yeah. here in Moab. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to compare this to another arch because we've only seen really one, and that was in New Mexico. It was really cool, yep. definitely smaller, but- um, Yeah, this one's huge. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is pretty huge. Yeah, I don't know, it looks pretty cool in the distance. We gotta oh. cover ourselves because of the sun. Definitely a great start to our adventures here in Moab. Can't get enough of these amazing landscapes here in the States whether it be here or Arizona or New Mexico. Those are the three main places we've gone to, but fantastic, huh? All right, we are back home. It's only day two, so fresh water still amazingly full. <laughs> Our black and grays are totally reading off. They, they're like saying almost full. But if you know anything about RVs, you know that those sensors are terrible and they don't work. You just sort of gotta develop a sixth sense to know when your gray and blacks are getting full. Uh, but anyway, I got the water heater going. I'm gonna take the fastest shower ever. <laughs> Cause yeah, it would be no good to start losing big amounts of water on our second day of this challenge. <laughs> So one of the good tricks about saving water while you're showering is to get one of these low flow shower heads. So this kind of shower head uses less water than the normal one that comes from the factory. This has got this like little on off switch here that makes it so when you turn it off, it stops the water flow to just a small dribble. But yeah, we take it even a step further. I basically turn the water completely off when I'm doing all my soaping up and stuff and then only turn this on when I'm ready to do like a rinse. And also I don't even wait for it to get hot or anything like that. If it's cold water or whatever, you just deal with it. <laughs> Cause that's what you gotta do when you wanna save water. Oh, alrighty. I'm all clean. <laughs> and the water still full. Yeah. I don't need a lot of water for my showers. Dana needs a lot of water for her showers though, whenever she does her hair. So I try to do it once a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hello everybody. So it is day four during our time here in Moab. Yesterday, we kind of just took it easy. We went to a national park called Canyonlands National Park and we just drove around and went to some of the viewpoints and stuff like that. So we kind of had a chill day. But today we are here at Dead Horse State Park. We're gonna do an actual hike today. I think it's like 13 kilometers or so. So should be a pretty good day for that. But um, more importantly, Today is a special day because it's Dana's birthday. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna celebrate Dana's birthday 
by doing a cool hike just to kick it off all awesome before we go home and we have like a super special dinner plan for her birthday so it's gonna be a great day and let's do this <laughs> Well, I'm no longer a baby 30 year old. <laughs> I am 31. <laughs> I will admit though, my 30s I think are gonna be a spectacular time of my life. And this entire 30th year was a dream come true. So my 30s are starting off really good. So we basically spent your 30th year yeah. on the road entirely. Yeah, I remember last April, planning out this trip and being like we're almost there it's almost time so yeah i'm pretty i'm pretty happy and being 30 we're still young <laughs> we're so young <laughs> got lots of exciting things ahead of us and yeah this is just the beginning kilometers because we did skip a few viewpoints but I think we did around 10 kilometers and it took us about two and a half hours yeah definitely worth seeing and I don't know it gave us I know it's not as extravagant as the Grand Canyon but it definitely um, similar gave us vibes. similar vibes yeah so highly recommend this park and yeah we're gonna go home and continue celebrating my birthday So, for Dana's <laughs> lovely birthday dinner, <laughs> I think we're gonna make some lasagna rolls. It's basically like lasagna, but instead of a big thing of lasagna, it's a bunch of little rolls of it. But yeah, it should be pretty easy and delicious. Let's do this. Hopefully, this fits all the noodles that we need. Oh dear. Let me get a spoon. Oh yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Okay, so change of plans. <laughs> we we aborted the mission. Yeah. <laughs> transfer the beef to that pot, transfer the, the water from that pot into this pot because the noodles were not fitting. <laughs> <It's not working. laughs> oh, wow. That looks so good. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Yeah. All right, after that whole mess of dishes, let's see how we're doing with the water situation. Oh, okay, we are finally flashing from full to two thirds. And we still got about a week and a half to go. So hopefully it's good. But Dana has yet to take a shower. So that's really gonna be the kicker. Don't judge me, y'all. <laughs> All right, good morning everybody. We are here at Castleton Tower and we're doing a hard hike today. It's not very long, it's apparently only like four kilometers, but we are climbing to that thing. I think, yeah, like there's signs that say you have to do some rock climbing, but I think that's if you actually wanna go to like actually scale this tower thing. But I think hopefully we can just hike to it and that's as far as we're gonna get because we're obviously not gonna be rock climbing with the dogs and stuff. We have no rock climbing gear, <laughs> but yeah. Should be a good day. Let's do this. All right, starting to climb. Hey, I'm already tired. We hike so much. Yeah, you just never really get that, used to it, do you? <laughs> you think that would be so good by now? <laughs> Look, we came from down there. Nice views already. Hello everyone. We've 
made it to the top. We are here. In the middle. In the middle. So that's the tower, the Castleton Tower. Yeah. And then on this side is another set of, I don't know what you call these. I think they're Mises. I could yeah. be wrong. All these crazy views all around us. That's nuts. This wraps up our hiking adventure. Just so you are aware, um, this is a hard hike. <laughs> like, it's not, you know, it's short, but it's short, but it is not one for the faint of heart. The trail to get to the section is like literally on the side of the cliff's edge, so you make one wrong footstep, you could slide all the way down. We did get to see some people rock climbing. I'm not sure if you can see them in the camera, but, but yeah, people are are doing that here, so it's pretty crazy. Whew. Yeah. That's a good hike. That was awesome. Definitely check this place out if you guys are ever at it. Yeah. There it is in the background. <laughs> we went all the way to that. Oh. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> Today's the day. Time for full showers for the both of us. <laughs> Like we said, Dana takes a fair amount of water to do a full shower, <laughs> but uh, let's see where we're at after. Ah, feel good? Yes, don't mind the murder scene behind me. Oh yes. That's a lot of hair. <laughs> All right, now that we've both had showers, time to see where the water ended up. And, oh, look, it's still flashing from full to two thirds. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> so it is day seven now. And uh, so we're about halfway through our boondocking two week challenge here. And our water has just started to flash from two thirds to one third. So that basically means we're at half tank of fresh water now, which is to be expected at this point. Honestly, like the fresh water is not what we're worried about in terms of running out or anything like that. It's really about the gray and black tank capacities running out before the fresh water runs out. So, but yeah, we're halfway through now and hopefully we'll still make it, but I think it's looking pretty good. So earlier today, we went and checked out Jeep Arch, uh, which is sort of in the same area as Corona Arch, which we saw a few days ago. It was pretty cool. It was a nice, easy-ish six kilometer hike. Uh, we got to see this cool arch that was sort of shaped like a Jeep. It was pretty fun to see. But yeah, we still have a few activities left here in Moab. So stay tuned for that. All right, everybody. It's day nine. I want to say it's day nine. <laughs> so day nine is the longest we've usually ever gone boondocking dry camping. So. After today, we will have beaten our old record. We're still doing fine with the water, flashing from two thirds to one third. So we're basically still at half. Kind of stuck inside the house today because I don't know if you can hear, we're stuck in another terrible windstorm. Anyway, it's pretty bad. Trailer's shaking like crazy. Yeah, we were gonna go out and do stuff today, but we're gonna be stuck here for today. Hopefully nothing bad happens to the trailer. It's not like it's our first windstorm or anything like that. We're getting pretty used to them at this point, honestly. So, but yeah. Day nine, a few more days to go, we got this. Hello everyone, welcome to a new day. Today, we are doing one of our last and final activities here in Moab. And I think it's gonna be a pretty exciting one. So join us, we are headed to a four by four road to end this trip off because it's supposed to be really, really pretty. This is the, well actually, I will tell you when we get there. So you might, you gotta stick around and wait to see which trail we do. But it's supposed to be beautiful. All right, everyone, we have made it to the beginning of the trail. We are doing the Schaefer Trail to Potash Road, I believe is how you pronounce it. And that takes you all the way into Moab and we're basically doing a full circle. Maybe Mike can draw like a little map for you so you kind of understand where we are and what we're doing. So yeah, we are starting in Canyonlands National Park and this means that we have to go downhill at the very beginning. A bunch of switchbacks, which we've heard can be pretty 
treacherous just in the fact that they are very steep. So yeah, let's buckle up because that's what this sign just said and let's have some fun. The trail is very narrow, so definitely keep your eyes on the road. The other day when we were in Canyonlands National Park, we actually got to see the infamous switchbacks that we would be taking for this trail. We've just heard that they can be, you know, super steep and very like tight turns and whatnot. So cross our fingers, the truck can do it. But yeah, we are here now. So this should be exciting. This is kind of one of the highlights of this portion of the trail. completely fine any car could do this as long as you're not like super long but yeah just just go slow the turns are pretty tight and just keep an eye on like if there's other cars coming up and down the trail okay so I believe way up there is where we were at Dead Horse Point and we are coming up to a little viewpoint here that will be a little bit lower view of Dead Horse Point. Well, all right, everyone, we are just finishing up the trail. We are passing by these salt pond things. I don't fully know what they are for. Something to do with salt from what I gather. We're gonna finish off the trail. We had fun with the drones. So hopefully you guys enjoyed all that footage. Um, puppies definitely did not enjoy it. <laughs> They're not a huge fan of dirt roads. The only other major like four by four trail that we have done was at Tuckerville Falls, which was a few weeks back. That one 100% had to have been rated like moderate. <laughs> and way beyond our skill level. We made it, we did it in our vehicle, and this one was like literally nothing, like easy peasy. There may have been one section where four by four would have been, you know, probably necessary, but I think you could have done it in pretty much any vehicle, but definitely four by four recommended. So definitely a fun little road trip day. All right, everybody. So it's our last day here. We are packing up the trailer today and we're heading out. To sum up, we were able to push 12 days here in Moab doing our little boondocking challenge. We didn't quite make it to two weeks, but I think it was mostly on the account of us running out of things to do here in Moab. And we kind of saw everything that we wanted to see and we kind of just want to get moving. We definitely did see a lot of really, really cool stuff here. We didn't make it over to Arches National Park, but I mean, if you've been watching our videos, you kind of know that by now. We have dogs, you can't do a lot of stuff at national parks with dogs, so it is what it is. But yeah, circling back to the whole boondocking thing, we were able to push 12 days here. Our water is on empty now, but there's actually probably still a fair amount. We probably could have pushed it at least another day or so if we really needed to. On the last day or two, we definitely had to kind of simplify our meals, save on dishes and things like that. But I am glad we were able to prove that we could go this long pretty much two weeks you know maybe one day we'll actually push it to the whole 14 days but just this time around you know kind of got bored and we want to get moving right so <laughs> in terms of showers Dana was able to take two full showers and I did four I think basically you know one of Dana's showers is two for me anyway in terms of the water usage so we basically ended up using the same water for that like a gray tank and our black tank they're both probably pretty full we've never actually taken either of them to max full because trust me you don't want to do that that would be awful <laughs> but yeah guys i think we're gonna call it for this episode we got some other big things coming so make sure you stick around next week for that thanks so much for watching my name is mike i'm dana we're let's just go travel and we'll see you guys on the next one Woo -hoo.